what we're going to be looking at today are motion graphs. We're going to get started with a displacement against time graph. We have one over here, you can see that we have the displacement in meters on the y-axis and we have the time in seconds on the x-axis. You can see that this graph here consists of two features. Firstly, we can see that the displacement is increasing linearly up until about 8 seconds and after 8 seconds the object remains with the same displacement from the origin so that will mean that the object will be stationary. One of the first questions that we need to ask is what is the gradient in this case? Well remember in general the gradient is equal to the change in the y-axis divided by the change in on the x-axis. What we have on the y-axis is the displacement, so in this case the gradient, I'm just going to call it grad for shorter, that's going to be the change in displacement divided by the change in time. However, this is actually the very definition of speed, it's the rate of change of displacement. Remember anytime we have anything divided by delta t, that's essentially the rate of change or how the displacement changes with time. So this is our velocity. The velocity in a displacement against time graph is the gradient. In our particular example our velocity will be the change in displacement uh, on the y-axis which goes from 0 up to 10 so this is going to be just 10 meters and our motion in this case occurs for 8 seconds. So it'll be 10 divided by 8, which is equal to 1.25 meters per second. This is what the velocity for this example will be. <clears throat> uh, check. Okay guys, for our next example, let's look at a velocity against time graph. Now, in this case, our gradient is going to be our change in y divided by the change in x. We have the velocity on the y-axis, so there's going to be delta v divided by delta t, because t is on the x-axis. So the gradient in a velocity against time graph is your change in velocity divided by the change of time, which is also the rate of change of velocity. Well, hang on a minute, this is actually the very definition of acceleration. So the gradient in a velocity against time graph is your acceleration. And very similarly to our previous example, if we were to have acceleration which is uh, increasing because it, it, it can vary as well, then similarly uh, let's say that we are moving at constant acceleration and then maybe there's an additional force acting, then the uh, graph might turn into a curve. If it's getting steeper, once again, the gradient of the tangent line at every single individual point is increasing, which means that this here is increasing acceleration. So increasing acceleration. And if the gradient is decreasing, so for to let's say start of this line at some point, the acceleration is decreasing, maybe the drag is increasing, or another physical reason, they will look something like this. So if it's if the gradient of the tangent is getting less and less steep at every single individual point, then this means that this is decreasing acceleration. The um, graph, this uh, straight line section here, uh, this of course represents constant velocity. So this is constant velocity or no acceleration. And we know this because at any point in this straight horizontal line, the velocity remains the same. Now, one final factor to consider is the 
area underneath a curve. So let's say that we are moving at 10 meters per second, let's say just for the sake of simplicity, let's keep that at a con let this be a constant speed and let this motion take five seconds. What will the area under the graph represent? In other words, this area over here, what quantity will that be? Well, if we were to find the area, what we must do is uh, multiply our velocity, our change in velocity really, multiplied by the change in time. Well, if we think about it, this is actually our displacement. So how much have we traveled from our initial point? This is just speed times the, or the velocity multiplied by the time that has, uh, that has elapsed. So in this case, this will be 10 meters per second multiplied by five seconds, which is going to give us 50 meters. So it's quite a simple example. However, in any in any velocity against time graph, the area will give us the displacement. Okay, folks, so I hope you've enjoyed this little summary of motion graphs. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing.